I'd like to show you how to zoom in on the trace. Just as a note, I won't use the scale button here, but it does have a more complete zoom feature for the OTDR, including auto zoom. Personally, I prefer to use the compass buttons and thumb wheel as I will describe next. The little display window in the low right indicates the area being zoomed in on and the relative magnification. The zoom area becomes apparent with a few clicks of the compass keys. The thumb wheel will move the zoom area to follow the cursor. To leave zoom, simply use the compass keys to maximize the viewing area. Now that you've seen how to zoom, I'd like to introduce how to set up the markers. I use the escape key to return to the OTDR menu. Then select F1 for markers. On this new page, we can now choose from types of markers we want to use. We have four options. Two point markers that are typical for end to end loss or point to point loss measurements. Four points which are used to establish an average loss value over the fiber just before and after a splice. A more complex six point loss gives you two point to point loss measurements and also the splice between the two segments. Then lastly, a single marker for designating a distance reference. As a quick note, the auxiliary functions allow you to delete all the markers once they're set. I'll choose two points. Move the cursor to where you want the reference point. Use the F key to label the marker. Now move the cursor again and use the other F key to label the second marker. Most people will use the zoom feature here. Information at the bottom of the screen measures between the markers. So far, I've shown the markers available in the simple or full auto mode. However, there is a five point marker setup that's available for expert users. I'll show you that now. First, select Setup, then Mode, and then Detail to select the expert operation. At the bottom, choose System Setup. Scroll to Marker Mode and change it to Line. Escape back to the OTDR menu. Since the setup was changed, a new shoot is needed of the fiber. Use the average key to shoot the fiber and get a new trace result. Once the shoot is completed, we'll return to the marker menu. Now we'll see a change from earlier. We now have a new five point markers option. From this screen, you'll note two near side markers an event marker and two far side markers. The in or near side marker should be placed on a smooth portion of the trace before the event. An average attenuation from between these two markers will be used to determine the attenuation level before the event at the E marker. Similarly, the F or far side markers will be placed after the event and will be extrapolated back to the event marker. This will be used as precise measurement of the far side attenuation level at the event. By subtracting the two levels at the event, an exact loss can be measured at the event. I'll select five point to show you this. I'll also zoom in to find an attenuation event to demonstrate on the screen. I'll check and turn off cursor link. I'll use the F2 key to select the first marker. I'll move the cursor where I want it and then use the F2 to bring up the second marker. I'll then place it as well. Next up is placement of the event marker. I'll zoom in once more to get a precise placement there. Now I'll zoom back and place the far side markers. That looks good for the first one. And now the second far side marker. One more click of the F2 key puts me back to the cursor. I now show the splice loss, attenuation of the fiber on both sides of the event, and the distance measured. Prior to moving on, I'll clear the markers. 
Now I'll use the escape key to return to the OTDR menu. The file menu has its own dedicated button. I like using a USB keyboard for this menu. Personally, I use an indestructible waterproof keyboard because you never know where you'll be using the OTDR. In the file menu, the F1 key selects what you want to do. As you can see, you can choose from Save, Load, Delete, Copy, Rename, Folders, and Printing Options. I'll choose Rename. The type of file and location can be selected with the F2 and F3 keys and the thumb wheel. Finally, you can actually perform the action with the F5 key. In the case of naming, an on-screen menu will pop up. Without a keyboard, use the F1, F2, and F5 keys to select text. With a keyboard, just start typing. When you're done, hit OK, or if you change your mind, choose Escape. Macros allow pre-programming of multiple tests. Choose Macro and then select which macro you want to modify. Each macro can do several tests in sequence. To make more than one test in sequence on a single macro, set up the first one, then select Job Number or F1 key, and make the second test valid for this macro. Once the first job is done, the second will start. You can have five tests in one macro. The macro's menu has its own measurement setup page and analysis setup page. These are applied to the macro job. Once set up, you can now add a comment to appear on the macro page for the user. This tells them what the macro is used for. You'll see some new menu options here, like the play arrow. It starts the macro. Once the first job is done, the second will start, and so on. Don't overlook the file setup. This is the naming used once the macro is run to save the results. Right now I've created the macro and labeled the results as daily test. My files will follow the comment plus wavelength plus number when done. If run, the results are stored and accessed for review via file. The AQ7275 menu will save the macro in it. I'm back out at the main menu and now I'll select the macro feature. Here's my macro. Once play is started, the macro will run for its duration. The last items to review for this training are the other features. On the AQ7275 menu, you'll see that I have a power monitor and light source. Just select them from the F keys. I'll choose the power monitor. From here I can select the wavelength, do a zero reference and other actions like change the measurement indication. I believe that at this point the interaction of the compass keys and the center enter button and the F keys are pretty obvious so I won't hit every key on the power monitor. The menu key takes you back to the main menu. Back in the OTDR there was a next key at the bottom. Selecting it will reveal some new options, such as Advanced Analysis, which allows more advanced testing and analysis. What is more common to be used is the Label function. This labels the test data with more complete information about the tester, the fiber, the company, etc. Again, I'd recommend using a keyboard here to enter this information. Lastly, the system menu allows you to access the information about the OTDR, such as part number, licensed options, serial number, and the software. It also allows a self-test of the OTDR and software update. When you're done with the OTDR, there is no trick to powering it down. Just briefly hold the power key. The unit will shut down automatically at this point. This concludes the video training on the use of the AQ7275 OTDR. Thank you again for purchasing the unit, and if you have additional questions, please contact your local Yokogawa representative.